Hey everybody, hey, welcome, welcome. It's Lee Godbold, Junk Removal Authority. Happy New Year. Check us out at JunkRA.com. We are the Junk Removal Industry's leading provider for training, marketing, contact center, and support services. This coming Friday, January 8th, we do have a video training and testing series that will finally be released. It's gonna cover every facet of running a junk removal company. It's gonna help you get in business or it's gonna help you expand your business. And you can also use it to train your employees. There's an employee section that way you can get the best possible producing employees helping your business out. Uh, today, what I want to talk about is uh, expansion. It's New Year's. Everybody during New Year's is about resolutions. It's about growing. It's about increasing your income, losing weight, uh, finding a partner, improving your relationship, um, doing a particular hobby, traveling somewhere you've never traveled before. These are all things that we all talk about wanting to do right here at the start. And for those of our, for business owners out there, one of the things business owners always talk about is, all right, this year I want to grow my business. I want to hit X revenue figure. I want to hit X profit margins. I want to gain so-and-so market share. I want this number of customers, whatever it might be, you're going to have some sort of goal that you want to hit. Any good, good business owners are always going to have goals. And even, uh, right here at the start of the year is when everybody sets them. Now what you have to make sure you do is you keep up with them. You know, in, in my case, once a week, I'm going over my goals to make sure that I'm on track of hitting them. So I set my annual goals and I figure out what I need to do each quarter, each month, each week, each day in order to obtain those. So ho hopefully you're doing that. For many of you out there, it's gonna be growing that business revenue. And one of the things that a lot of people look at is expansion. So it's uh, getting into a new service, or going into a new area. I'm all about expansion. I love it. I love new services. I love new areas if you do it correctly. So here's what I'm going to tell you. The vast majority of markets out there, if you have a market of at least a million people, you're in a market where you should probably be able to get at minimum a three truck location before you really look into expanding. So three trucks, uh, nowadays, you can do almost a million dollars a year on three trucks running pretty consistently the way prices have gone. So you have almost a million dollar a year business if you've done a good job getting your systems put in place, if you have uh, great people, if you've got reliable equipment, if you've got somebody that's stepped up and he's a little bit of a supervisor, then at that point, you probably have the time to expand in another area or expand into another service. And I always encourage people to always be looking to expand. One of the things I mentioned is at some point, you're going to get to a sales level that you're satisfied with. I don't know when that's going to be for me, for most for most of you. For me, there never be a really a point that I'm completely satisfied. It's always, how do we do a better service for our clients? How do we grow our top line? How do we increase our bottom line? Part of that's monetary uh, ambitions, houses I'd like, cars I'd eventually like to have, uh, airplanes I'd like to have. I mean, we got a DC-3 behind me now. I don't want to own a DC-3. It's just a cool last picture. But... Um, I'm motivated to keep growing that. And part of it, a good portion of it though, is just the challenge. I just enjoy, to me, business is almost like a sport. It's how do you win at this particular sport? And it's that challenge of keeping going. I mean, you got Bill, Bill Belichick in football, Tom Brady. These guys have won, what, six rings, uh, six championships. Jimmy Johnson in NASCAR had seven championships. Uh, still, you know, still going strong. You know, they want everything they can win. They just want to, it's, it's a sport to them. They want to keep challenging themselves to better, to get better and better and better. And a lot of it with me is motivated by that. It's just, how do I keep bettering myself? So when it comes to expansion, if you get your junk removal company to a three truck operation, you should be making, oh, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year under benefit. You should have a business that's not requiring you to be involved every single moment. So now, what does that mean? That now means you have the time and the resources, the income to come in in order to expand. So there's a couple of different ways going about it. One, you can expand into a new area. Two, you can expand into another service. And then within services, there's a few different routes you can get. So let's look at expanding new services. What most people look at right off the bat is they look at going into dumpsters. Dumpsters is the most logical expansion opportunity within junk removal. Um, no explanation is really necessary. I mean, it just makes sense because you have people that call to get junk removal. 
dumpster might make sense. And actually what happens the other way around is you have a lot of people that call for a dumpster. They're not familiar with junk removal and you actually upgrade them to a junk removal service. So that makes sense then. Where a lot of people make a mistake though is they go into dumpsters really soon. They figure this is something I can do anyway. I can use the same truck, whatever. So what happens is you don't go out and you buy enough bins. You don't have a dedicated resource on doing just the dumpsters. So you haven't hired one guy just to move the dumpsters. It's just such a small, uh, small opportunity. So what, what occurs is sometimes you've got guys get your junk removal teams delivering dumpsters or you have a dump, just one guy delivering dumpsters instead of running your junk removal truck and a junk removal job comes in and you don't have the help to do it that day. So you miss out on the appointment. Like the same day pickups are huge. So unless you got two guys running around, a lot of jobs you can't do by yourself. So you miss out on that income or you keep two guys in the truck while you deliver your dumpsters and that kills the amount of money you're making because now you're paying double labor to drop it off and pick it back up. Logistically, it's a, not, it's a mess. You might drop a bin off and it turns out you need it on a Saturday afternoon to do a job after your landfill closed. Um, it's logistically just a mess. And the thing is, you're going to, and, and on the advertising end, all right, so now instead of focusing your advertising, focus on your advertising on just junk removal and hitting that hard and maximizing it out, your Google advertising on junk removal, maximizing Yelp on junk removal, uh, maximizing your entire message around junk removal. Now you're cannibalizing it because you're also advertising dumpsters. And unless you have a huge budget, six, eight, 10, 20,000 a month, dumpsters, you can spend a lot of money on dumpsters on ads. Unless you have a huge advertising budget, your what what occurs is your top line. What might happen is your top line grows. You could have maybe grown, probably probably grown that top line in just junk removal uh, just as fast for less money. So you'd have made more money. You'd been less stressed because you, you you're focused in on one service. Once you get that three truck operation, though, you got a couple hundred thousand dollars in. Now what you, what do you do? If you're gonna get in dumpsters, you go out there and you buy yourself at minimum 12 bins. If you can swing 20, go for 20. Get you a good truck, uh, a good hook truck, hook lift truck, they can do at least 20 yards. The big ones, see in dumpsters, the big ones are, uh, are at the 30 yards actually where most of your, a lot of your big money is. But you can start out in 20 yards because you can use your residential advertisement. The same way you've been advertising junk, you can advertise for dumpsters and you'll get good business coming in from it. And then you can focus in later on getting your home builders, uh, shopping malls, just commercial companies and all like that to sign up for your service. But at the first, most markets, there's a bunch of residential business to be had. So that's one way to expand. And you just keep investing. With dumpsters, there's a lot of money in dumpsters. There's a lot of investment in dumpsters because every time you turn around, you need to buy more bins. So you're really not going to make great money. Start making decent money in dumpsters till you get about 60 bins. And even then, it's not awesome. Get about 100 bins, you're making pretty, you're making okay money. Get about two, three, 400 bins, that's when you're making real good money. And that's when you have something that somebody can come and they'll look to purchase from you. So when you go into dumpsters, just understand it's a constant expansion. You're probably not gonna profit a whole lot the first couple of years because you need to be moving into it to get to a size where you can actually make decent money without having to be on the truck yourself all the time and running those bins and swapping those bins out. Then you have the opportunity to go into different service other than dumpsters. So you could pair, you have one where you can cross sale. You've got carpet cleaning potentially. They, I'm not a, you know, I've done some research on it and um, equipment's kind of a pain and people are real sensitive. You know, when you remove junk, there's a lot less they're gonna complain about than if they see this little small spot in the carpet that you missed that you might not could have gotten. So it's, it's, it's a little bit different of service, but carpet cleaning is one. Regular cleaning service is another. Mold remediation is another you could potentially do mold remediation. If people have mold, they need to get rid of junk. So there's a lot of cross sale opportunities. You do one service and then you have a sales system in place to inform them of the other services you have. The next route, the route that we did with junk doctors, we're up, we have three locations with junk doctors. That's probably all we'll ever have. We'll never go outside of the state of North Carolina because of junk removal authority. Um, we went into new locations. So in new locations, there's you're gonna have to spend a lot of time there at the start. You have to get people hired up, which is difficult. You gotta get your equipment there, and your processes better be damn good. But that's the most you are most familiar with junk removal. So if you go into new locations within a few hours of where you currently are, it's a great way to expand. You're gonna be nervous at first when guys no show you. You're gonna be in a bind. You know you need to spend a little extra money to give yourself kind of that cushion. So you need to have some extra people, maybe an extra truck. If something goes down, that does mean you make less money in the short term. But you've got, to me, I always want to reduce stress. And 
Uh, I got a lot going on. So uh, when you first get, if you all you're running is this kind of this one business or this second location, you might get handled a little better. You might be a little more flexible to get out there on your own and, and get out there yourself to fix something. But always be looking as soon as you can, get yourself kind of a cushion. And when bad things happen, you'll thank me because then you have an option. It's a lot less stress. Stress will wear you down. What good is making a little extra money if it takes years off your life and, and your life quality goes way down. So look for a cushion. I don't have a preference on expansion between one way or the other, geographically or new service. There's money to be had in both, and maybe you do both. Maybe expand geographically and into new services. But don't try and do too much all at once. Just pick what you're going to do and do it extremely well. Give it some time. Give it focused attention for a long period, for a good period of time. Pick out one or two things you're going to do this year and just focus in on for that entire year, and you'll be amazed at where it's, where it's going to put you uh, when, it roll, when next January rolls around. I hope it's been helpful for you guys. Uh, always be thinking expansion, even right now. January, February are traditionally two of the slowest months in the junk removal season. So what you need to do in order to keep your spirits up, to keep you excited, is you need to be thinking about the possibility, where you're going to go this year. You need to get prepared for it. Uh, go ahead and get ready. Get your investments ready, guys, in terms of uh, trucks and people and equipment. Be ready to roll those ads out, to order that truck. It's about time to order trucks now. As a matter of fact, check out junkremovaltrucksforsale.com. We're churning out junk removal trucks kind of left and right. All we build are junk removal trucks. We're getting people ready for the spring season. You don't want to wait till April when you're slammed to order a truck because there's going to be 50 other people that are doing the same thing. And it's going to be uh, difficult to, to get one soon enough. You're going to miss out on sales. So plan a little bit ahead right now. Keep yourself focused. When you're slow, keep yourself focused on where you're going. Here, here's what I'm going to tell you. It's going to pick up. If you're slow right now, it's going to pick up. A lot of guys ain't slow, but there are a lot that are. It will pick back up. Don't beat yourself down here. I can promise you, I've seen this before. If you've had a good year, if it's 2020 was good for you, pretty good for you. If you had a good spring, had a good summer, you had a good fall, it's coming. It's just around the corner. You just got to get through this winter. Get through this winter. Be prepared for this coming busy season. Save up. And that's going to put you in a great position come next winter. So what you need to do next winter is you go off like my wife and I just did. We went down to the Virgin Islands. You, 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 you go down... You get your company where it's running right. You go take a vacation. You got enough money built up where you can sustain that. So think about that going through this upcoming busy season. Hey, appreciate everybody watching. Uh, check us out at junkra.com. Uh, we are the junk removal industry's leading provider. If you guys, hey, if you guys are in business already and you're looking to, you're looking to improve your business, all the stuff we just talked about. How do you expand? How do you get the processes? Everything I just mentioned that's available. It's coming Friday with our junk removal training series. First time ever we've uh, anybody's ever released a video training series, over 140 videos, testing modules, scoring systems for you and your employees is available this coming Friday. That's the 8th. Uh, send us a message through junkarray.com or contact form or shane at junkarray.com if you're interested. That'll get you in the queue so we can go ahead and get purchased. Uh, marketing services, business packages. If you're brand new, you're looking to get into business, we've got everything you need, a contact center that answers your calls to help you live a better life, run a better business. It's junkarray.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Happy New Year.